I'll tell you about the current at the distance and resonant transparency in uh, wild semi-metals. And it's a work uh, done with uh, my student, Yuval Baum at Weizmann, with my colleague at Weizmann, Erez Berg, and with uh, our uh, distant colleague, Sid, Sid Parmesarawan, who is at UC Irvine. And we're being funded by these uh, agencies. Uh, but of course, before uh, getting into the subject, uh, congratulations, boys. Uh, this uh, Trieste is the place where we met, I think. And if I remember correctly, we got lost on the way back from the cave. So it wasn't far that this conference wouldn't have, have, uh, would not have happened if we didn't find our way back. Um, so I'm glad to be here. <coughs> Uh, okay, the, the, the outline is, uh, is this. I'm, I'm, I'll, uh, first, I'll explain what is the problem we're looking at, uh, and it's basically two ex simple experimental setups. I'll uh, review the answer we get for a standard metal and uh, the di very different answer we get for a vile semi-metal. And then I'll uh, uh, tell you, remind you, uh, what vile semi-metals are. Uh, what the pro uh, fundamental properties are, and in particular, what's the effect of, magnet uh, of magnetic field on them. Uh, and after doing that, I'll tell you how do we get our answer, and uh, uh, in particular, uh, uh, some, some emphasis on, on the lack of effect of disorder, of particular type of disorder on what we are talking about. Uh, so, so two experimental setup. They, uh, both of them involve a slab of uh, vial semi-metal, uh, and in the first one, we have two contacts up here. The thickness of the slab is L, and the two contacts are uh, close by to one another, distance much smaller than L. Uh, we, we drive a current from one contact to the other and measure the voltage on the other edge at a similar distance. Basically, uh, the mirror image of the same points here. Two contacts measure the voltage. Now, the question is, uh, what is the voltage uh, on the lower uh, two contacts as a function of the voltage on the upper one? For a, a metal, for a standard metal, of course, we solve uh, Kirchhoff equations and uh, uh, Ohm's law. And just to, uh, for, for a reason which I cannot uh, reproduce now, we uh, uh, use the notation capital sigma for the conductivity rather than small sigma. But other than that, it's really trivial. And uh, what you find is, since this distance is much larger than the distance between the the two contacts, a very little of the current get, uh, gets to the other side, and therefore the voltage between these two contacts will be small, and whatever you have here will be parallel to the voltage uh, between the upper two uh, uh, contacts. Now, for a vile semi-metal in a magnetic field, magnetic field uh, oriented in the z direction, what we find is that there will be a significant voltage on the lower surface, and it will be anti-parallel to the voltage here. A little bit, uh, some, some similarity, but uh, I think coincidental, with what uh, uh, Leonid was talking about yesterday uh, in the context of uh, hydrodynamics. Uh, so, so this is uh, the first experimental setup. Second experimental setup, same story, same slab, but now instead of putting a DC voltage and contacts and so on, we uh, send in radiation from above, uh, electromagnetic radiation, uh, more or less at the microwave range, and ask how much of it is transmitted to the other side. Now, again, this distance is L. And uh, uh, for a conventional metal, of course, this is a textbook, a textbook problem. And uh, you solve a, a Maxwell equation. You have Ohm's law. And you find that the transmission goes down exponentially with the thickness, where the, with the characteristic length being the skin depth. Uh, what I'm going to argue is that for vile semi-metals uh, under a magnetic field in the z direction, there will be transmi transmission resonances in which most of the absorption in the metal turns into transmission. So the, uh, uh, there will be uh, frequencies at which the uh, uh, vile semi-metal becomes transparent. This is a, uh, this has some similarity to, uh, similarity to, to an old effect. Uh, uh, found many years ago um, by, by Mark Asbel, by Kana, and by uh, uh, Gantmacher, uh, still working uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, and uh, uh, in the effect they were talking about, you take a slab of a metal, you radiate, and you get a transmission resonance under conditions at which 
the frequency of the uh, radiation corresponds to the uh, cyclotron frequency of the electrons under a magnetic field, and the thickness of the uh, slab corresponds to the uh, cyclotron uh, radius. Now, uh, and, and in that case, the, magnet, the magnetic field you, you should apply perpendicular, so the, the radiation goes this way, the magnetic field should be perpendicular to the uh, radiation. In the case I'm talking about, as I said, the magnetic field is in the z direction, and so is also the propagation of the radiation. Uh, so so uh, uh, it's, it's, it has some similarity, but it's a different effect. Now, the, the, the source of both of these effect, uh, effects is one. It is the conductivity uh, of the uh, vile semi-metal, and in particular, the fact that the conductivity is non-local in space. Of course, as we know, uh, uh, Ohm's law tells us that the uh, current at the point R and T is linear in the electric field and point R prime and T prime, where we have uh, a conductivity, uh, and uh, sigma tilde means that uh, we're talking about uh, real space, real time conductivity, a conductivity that's a function of the point where the electric field is R prime, the point where the current is measured R, and the time difference T minus T prime. For a standard metal, this conductivity is pretty much a delta function in space. Not quite delta function, but uh, uh, close to it. For a vile semi-metal, as I, as I will explain, this is not the case. Instead, what happens is, remember the, the, the slab uh, uh, geometry, you put an electric field in one surface, you get a current flowing in the other surface. This is when there is a magnetic field in the z direction. It all depends on that magnetic field. Uh, so so uh, uh, that's more or less the introduction to what I wanted to say. Now, uh, let me step back a few steps and, and uh, uh, review what uh, while semi-metals are and, and how uh, is this uh, magnetic field, which I said is crucial to everything, uh, how does it affect them? Uh, so, so we're talking about a three-dimensional uh, lattice. Uh, so, so think about a three-dimensional band structure uh, that's, that has a, a energy that's a function of kx, ky, and kz, and wave functions which are functions of kx, ky, and kz. Now fix ky. So if you fix ky, you get a two-dimensional system because ky is fixed, so uh, everything is a function only of kx and kz. So, so for every ky, this two-dimensional system has a churn number c of ky. Now, just for concreteness, it's not crucial, but for concreteness, let's think about a system that's globally time-reversal symmetric before we put in the magnetic field. Then uh, the churn number as a function of ky must be zero bo both for ky equals zero and for ky equals pi. So here's the chair number as a function of ky, and you see it's zero here, and of course it's zero here because it's periodic, and it's zero here also. Now it may be zero everywhere, and then, uh, uh, I've, uh, and then there's nothing, uh, uh, it's not a wild semi-metal. But it may be that it's not. It may be that uh, for parts of the ky axis, it will be non-zero. Of course, there's time reversal symmetry, so if it's uh, uh, positive here, it will be negative here. But in any case, what's important is that it's non-zero. If when that happens, this is a vile semi-metal. Uh, and this was discovered in, in, in a, a series of works, and I have a more extensive list uh, later. Uh, so this is a vile semi-metal. Now, uh, 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 here's the, the uh, 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 sort of longer list. Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, studied in the last few years by, by many people, both theoretically and experimentally. And uh, uh, experimentally, people saw mostly with ARPES uh, the uh, band structure that correct that's characteristic uh, of this. And, and maybe I should say, uh, if, the, if as a function of KY, there are regions where the churn number is non-zero, then there must be transition points at which the churn number changes, and therefore the gap closes. So, so this cannot be gapped everywhere, and this is why it becomes a semi-metal. Each of these points becomes a, a Dirac cone or a wild cone, depending who you want to give the credit to. Uh, so, so uh, uh, and those uh, 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 cones were, were seen in, in ARPES and, and also in some transport measurement, measurements, and there are various uh, materials uh, where that uh, takes place. Now, uh, 
I'd like to get uh, to, 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 to get to this non-local uh, conductivity. So, so let's keep on fixing KY as we did before. So now we know uh, we, we, we have these regions of KY where the system has a churn number. So as a function of KX and KZ, as a function of KX and Z, these are quant this is, uh, the system is a quantum whole state. And if it's a quantum whole state, it means that it has edge states on the surfaces. So for values of KY for each, uh, 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 for values of KY for which uh, the churn number is non-zero, there will be surface states or, or edge states on the uh, uh, Z surfaces uh, at, uh, at which uh, 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 the gap closes and at which there is a chiral motion, like uh, any quantum wall state. However, this will be limited only for uh, those regions of KY for which uh, the churn number is non-zero. So the surface which has a spectrum, the, the Z surface which has a spectrum of KX and KY will have what's, what's been called Fermi arcs. We'll have lines of uh, uh, states in momentum space which start and end. Now, they, they don't really end. What, they, what happened is that they penetrate into the bulk, into the third dimension, which is not drawn here. Uh, now, with no magnetic field, uh, you know, you, you solve the, the uh, block states, and there are constants of motion. The, the crystal momentum is a constant of motion. But once you put in a magnetic field, the, the wave vector changes as a function of time, according to uh, sort of Newton's second law. So, so, so K will... Uh, 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 so so uh, the electron will flow along lines of constant energy in momentum space, which means if it is on the surface, it will flow along the Fermi arc until it gets to its end. When it gets to its end, it must penetrate into the bulb because there are no more states on the surface. Uh, so, so, so that gives rise to very interesting cyclotron uh, trajectories. So... Uh, uh, to see that, let's, let's now think about the bulk. So, so what happens in the bulk if we have a, a, a three-dimensional metal in a magnetic field? So for a standard metal, you, you just separate the xy direction from the z direction. You have lambda levels in the xy plane and uh, plane waves in the z direction we, in which uh, uh, you know, motion is not affected by the magnetic field. This cannot happen for a vile semi-metal because... Uh, as we said, as, a, as we put a magnetic field, the electron flows along the Fermi arc, and when it, end, when it gets to the end of the arc, it has no choice but to penetrate into the bulk. So it must be able to penetrate into the bulk and not come back to that point. So this point cannot, uh, or, or, uh, must have some, there must be a way for the electron to, to get into the bulk and not come back. And indeed, if you solve the spectrum uh, of, the, uh, of a Dirac cone, a three-dimensional Dirac cone in a magnetic field in the z direction, you get the following type of a spectrum. Each one of these points is a Landau level. Uh, a, a, and this is now a, the, the, the spectrum as a function of Kz, of the momentum in the third dimension. So, uh, so each of these uh, 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 curves is a, is a Landau level. Uh, which, which uh, disperses as a function of Kz. Now, uh, the zero energy Landau level, as you see, becomes a chiral state with a motion that's directed uh, in one direction in, uh, in the z direction. Of course, this is one uh, 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 end of the, of the Fermi arc. The other end looks just the, the mirror image and has a... a, a, a Zero, zero energy Landau level, which flows in the opposite direction. So now to understand what happens as a function, or, or what, 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 uh, to understand how the cyclotron orbits look like as we uh, turn on a magnetic field in, in such a situation, let's think first about this energy. So uh, in this energy, the, uh, uh, the bulk has only one Landau level uh, you can occupy, and uh, uh, as opposed, of course, to what happens here, which we will discuss uh, a little bit later. Uh, so the Landau level has, uh, 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 the, 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 the bulk has only one Landau level, and it has uh, an upwards moving uh, state 
uh, in one uh, end of the Fermi arc and a downwards moving uh, state, excuse me, in the, in the other end of the Fermi arc. So that gives rise to a cyclotron, cyclotron, cyclotron orbit that looks the following way. Remember, there's this surface, that surface, and the bulk. Uh, if the electron starts on the upper surface, it moves in momentum space along the arc, which in real space, like always, means motion in a, a, a direction perpendicular to the motion in a momentum space. But anyway, it's a motion along the surface. By the time the electron gets to the end of the arc, it, it gets uh, to the bulk and flows all the way to the other surface. When it gets to the other surface, it flows backwards on the arc on the, uh, on the other surface and then back. So the cyclotron, cyclotron orbit, instead of looking the familiar, uh, you know, planar circle that we have in a, in a conventional metal, it will have sort of a half a circle on one surface, then in the bulk to the other uh, uh, surface, and then the other half of a circle. I need uh, another blackboard, but uh, uh, you get the idea, I hope. Uh, so, so, so this is a, 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 the, the, the crucial point. The cyclotron orbit has a, four parts, if you want. One in the upper surface, one in the bulk, one in the lower surface, a, a, and back in the bulk. And then it goes on, on and on. Uh, and this is the source of the, of the non-local responses we will now see. Now there's a period to this uh, motion, and it, it, it's... As, as you, you can guess by this uh, uh, structure I, I outlined, uh, the, the period will, will have uh, two parts which are in the bulk and two parts which are on the surfaces. In the bulk, uh, 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 the, the, the time it takes to go from one surface to the other, of course, depends on, on thickness. It's the thickness divided by the velocity, uh, the velocity of the, of the uh, uh, cone. Uh, and, uh, and the time to, to go on the arc depends on how long the arc is divided by the speed at which, uh, divided by k dot, the speed at which you go in momentum space, which is determined by the Lorentz force. So this was worked out by this uh, uh, group in Berkeley. Uh, so now let's get back to the problem I uh, 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 started with. Uh, we have the slab. And uh, we'd like either to look at the DC problem or to look at the radiation. In both cases, what we need is the conductivity. What we need is uh, uh, the non-local conductivity uh, uh, that, 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 that comes out in, in uh, wild semi-metal in a magnetic field. So to analyze this, let's look at this uh, uh, real space, real time conductivity sigma tilde for uh, some time t. Uh, uh, and for coordinates, which are one surface and the other surface. And to see that, uh, to, to calculate that, basically what it says is we need to apply a pulse, uh, or a pulse of an electric field on the upper surface at t equals zero, and ask how much current we get at the lower surface at the time t. So, so uh, uh, to, to apply the electric field in the uh, at time zero, we apply a vector potential uh, AX, which is uh, applied uh, at a thin layer close to uh, uh, the upper surface um, uh, at, uh, at time t equals zero. Um, it should actually be a, a, a theta function of t, sorry. Uh, the electric field goes like delta, a delta function of t. Uh, and, and the application of the vector potential, uh, I'm sorry, this is a mistake, it's, it's a theta function. Uh, the, the application of the, uh, of the uh, vector potential shifts the, the uh, Fermi surface at the upper surface at the time t equals zero and, and uh, uh, initiates a cyclotron motion at the upper surface. Now, as I said before, it takes some time, but that, uh, this motion gets to the lower surface. Uh, so, so, so the current at the lower surface, after a while, uh, it starts at zero and then goes up uh, when the electrons from the upper surface get to, to the lower one. And then it, it goes down when they start coming back, and then it repeats itself uh, in a, in a, a periodic uh, fashion. Uh, 
so, so this is the conductivity. This is the real time, real space conductivity um, uh, for, for the, the non-local one, having the electric field in one surface uh, and the uh, uh, current calculated on the other surface. And we can substitute that into the uh, uh, Ohm's law and substitute Ohm's law uh, into Kirchhoff's laws or into Maxwell's equations for the two problems as it's discussed before. And when we do that, we find uh, that uh, th this is the, the, the voltage as a function of the z direction in the absence of, uh, uh, for the DC experiment, uh, in, in the absence of magnetic field, the, as, we sa as I said uh, earlier, there's no um, uh, voltage developing on the uh, opposite surface at all. Uh, in the presence of magnetic field, we get a voltage that's anti-parallel and uh, uh, is, is appreciable compared to the voltage uh, uh, in the upper surface. Uh, and and as, as I said before, there are transmission reson resonances. And the physics of these transmission resonances is there is a cyclotron uh, uh, frequency associated with this motion between the two surfaces. If uh, uh, this period commensurates with the period of the radiation, uh, it, it's a little bit like the asbel kanner effect. Uh, the, the, ele the electron absorbs a photon when it gets to the uh, upper surface and emits it when it gets to the lower surface. Uh, so this is the, the, the story. Uh, <coughs> this is the story for um, a clean case. Now, um, what, what should we worry about um, that can, that can uh, uh, change the picture? So there are a few things I'd like to mention, uh, in particular one of the, in particular two of them because they are interesting. Um, first is uh, uh, impurity scattering. So, so, so this story was all uh, 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 block equations and uh, block bands uh, and, and with the application of elect electric and magnetic field. What happens if there, if there is scattering? So, we, so I'd like to distinguish between two types of scattering. Scattering within the same Dirac cone or wild cone and scattering between the different wild cones. Let me start with the same uh, uh, wild cone because uh, uh, it's more interesting. Uh, so so, so uh, uh, imagine that the, so before we talked about the chemical potential being here, and then if the chemical potential is here, there's nowhere to scatter to in the same Dirac cone. Now let's imagine that the chemical potential is here. So, so now if you move along this, this chiral mode that has only a direction in the Z, uh, only motion in, in, in the up direction in the Z, uh, 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 only motion upwards in the Z direction, now you can scatter to, to higher Lando levels which have motion both uh, up and down. Now uh, it turns out that there's very little effect to this and, and uh, 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 I'd like to explain that. And, and the, the, the analog which I find um, illuminating to, to think about is, is a, a chiral quantum hole edge coupled to many archival wires. So uh, let's imagine the following situation. Imagine that we, we have a, a new equals one. You have a new equals one quantum hole state here. And now, uh, this is all the new equals one, and this is the uh, and there's an edge mode that flows uh, chirally to the right. And now there, there are you couple the, the, this mode to, to a set of uh, wires here and to a set of wires here. These wires are not chiral. The the the, the mapping is. Uh, uh, it's basically the, the, the geometry of the cycloton orbit that I explained um, unfolded into, into a line. This is motion along the upper surface. This is the Fermi arc. This is what happens when you enter to the bulk. You have now Landau levels to scatter to. This is the motion in the lower surface where you move along the Fermi arc. And this is the motion uh, in the bulk on the way back. Again, you have uh, uh, Landau levels to scatter to. You cannot scatter so far until we, we talk, until we get later, uh, you cannot scatter from one uh, wild cone to the other. 
but uh, uh, you can scatter uh, to, to, to this set of lambda levels. Now you see the, the, the reason for, for the relative insensitivity to, uh, to this type of disorder. Think about the, 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 the quantum hole uh, analog. You send, an, uh, you send a current from here, it will diffuse its way into these wires back and forth, but eventually it must get to here. There's, uh, there's no way it can get back because this is a chiral mode and these are finite uh, wires. So uh, all, the, all the current that emanates from here must eventually make it to the right, which is to say all the current that starts on the upper surface must eventually get to the lower surface and, and, and on. Uh, so what will happen? What, what, effect, what can these uh, uh, wires do? Well, they can slow things down. They can make the motion uh, uh, slower. And, and uh, we'll talk about this in a second. And uh, they can, so, so, so the, the distance, the time distance, the time separation between the, the uh, recurring uh, uh, repetitions of the cycloton motion can get uh, longer and longer. And, and, and uh, these peaks can be broadened because uh, uh, what the electrons uh, uh, will do is they, they will diffuse in, in between these uh, wires or, or in, in between these Lando levels, going part of the way down, part of the way up, diffusing, but eventually going down, uh, if this is the direction of this uh, state. Uh, so, so, so these peaks will uh, get broadened. Now, when we, when we think about DC, we integrate over, you know, uh, uh, DC conductivity uh, 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 implies integrating sigma tilde over all times, which means uh, uh, burdening or, or, or uh, slowing down make no difference. What that? How come? Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, so, 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 uh, so the DC effect is not affected because uh, we integrate over this. Uh, uh, as to the AC effect, the, the slowing down changes the period and uh, uh, a, a good estimate tells us that the, the, uh, that the, the slowing down factor of uh, uh, 2n plus 1, where n is the number of lambda levels, uh, and that there's a burdening that uh, uh, limits the number of uh, 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 harmonics of uh, resonance uh, that we can uh, uh, observe, uh, but, but uh, uh, it does not destroy the effect altogether. There is no exponential, uh, 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 there's nothing that depends exponentially on the thickness divided by the uh, mean free path. So this is this type of disorder. Uh, other troubles to worry about. Um, second is uh, uh, the issues of phase coherence uh, and, and, and the like, and that, those are completely irrelevant. This is not a quantum effect. This is all semi-classical transport. This is not Trubnik of the house. Uh, it's, more, it's, it's basically cycloton resonance. Uh, so there is no exponential suppression with temperature, uh, and, and there, there is no, uh, uh, as I said, exponential suppression with mean free path. Uh, third uh, uh, issue to worry about is uh, impurity scattering between different while nodes. Um, this, is, this is trouble. So, so this is just like uh, uh, various effects in graphene and so on, once you introduce coupling between uh, different uh, Dirac cones, uh, the story is over. Uh, so so it, th there's no protection in the sense of the quantum Hall effect. Uh, the protection is... Uh, uh, only to the extent that the sample is uh, thinner than the mean free path for inter-node scattering. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to uh, mention in, in a, a minute or two is there's something called chiral anomaly. Should we worry about that? Uh, so, uh, thinking about the uh, uh, anomalies, uh, I, I noticed that... Uh, normality is in the eye of the beholder. So what is uh, normal or anomalous uh, may depend on your uh, view. In this particular case, this is the, the equation known as a chiral anomaly, uh, and it is the fact that the uh, number of uh, uh, electrons in one node minus the number of, or that electrons flow from one node to another as you put uh, 
an electric uh, field that's parallel to a magnetic field. It looks very mysterious. It's, it's completely trivial, if you ask me. Uh, if, if you just write it in terms of the, z, the current in the z direction as a function of the electric field in the z direction, the uh, statement of chiral anomaly is the statement that the current in the z direction goes like 1 over i omega times the electric field in the z direction. Forget all the, 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 the other factors. What is important is that the current goes like 1 over i omega. So this is the statement that there is ballistic transport along the z direction, which is exactly the statement I, I, I was talking about before, that as the current enters the bulk, as long as you don't have scattering between the two Dirac cones, it must get, get all the way to the, to the other surface. Uh, in this particular case, we don't have, uh, 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 we send radiation in the z direction, so the electric field is only in the xy plane, so, so uh, uh, the electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field. It has no effect on the AC, on the asbel asbel kanner type phenomenon, uh, and the effect on the DC, I don't have time to explain, is, is, uh, is not uh, crucial. Uh, okay, the... the, the uh, regime we think of is, uh, we're talking about microwave frequencies, of course, we don't want interband transitions and nothing optical and so on. And, uh, and it turns out that the, the thickness you want for, for the uh, slab is, is a few microns, um, a few microns, 10 microns, something like that. Uh, so to, to summarize, uh, what I told you is uh, that there are unique cyclotron orbits that go between the two surfaces of a slab sample uh, of uh, uh, vinyl semi-metals, and, uh, and they give rise to two uh, interesting transport phenomena. One is uh, uh, the fact that you uh, uh, push a current between two contacts here and get opposite voltage or opposite current between these two uh, contacts down here, and the other is that you get electromagnetic resonant transmission at frequencies that commensurate with the frequency of the uh, cyclonal orbits. And the, the, uh, 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 the other thing I told you about, which I'd like to, to uh, uh, emphasize in the summary, is that the uh, intranode scattering is limited in the way it can affect uh, uh, this, this uh, phenomenon. Thank you very much.